Hey everyone, Dana here, and in this video I am really looking forward to talking about this topic with Kari from the Easy German YouTube channel. When I talked to Kari about what topic we could talk about for this video series, she seemed really passionate about this topic, and you really jumped on this one. With that, we should just get into it. Let's go. What emotions does our society say it's okay for women to show, and what emotions does our society say it's not okay for women to show? Show. I think it's okay for women to show all sorts of positive emotions like laugh and smile and be happy. That you're affectionate, that you care about other people, that you're sensitive about things. Crying, I think like the, the sort of more pretty crying is okay for women. I don't think women are constrained in showing their feelings. I think it depends on personality, how much you're showing, but generally I think for women it's easier to show a wide variety of feelings. But I think it, the, the limit of those emotions are a little bit uh, restricted. So you can't get angry because then you might be crazy. I think for women it's normally okay to be emotional, so to, to cry, but only in certain circumstances. So I think if you're a woman and um, you're working somewhere and then you're crying, it's also considered to be very bad because then you're too emotional. Society does not want to see women screaming, being angry, being loud, using like violent language or you yeah being powerful and telling your opinions and being really strongly about them that is often considered to be a negative thing for women like oh, she's so aggressive she's on her period she's shouting again what emotions would you say our society says is okay and not okay for men to show i think for men it is often perceived okay to show perseverance, maybe even anger, some sort of frustration. I think okay is a, any kind of aggression. I think for men um, it's okay to be self-confident, to be the boss, to be bossy maybe. Ruthlessness. Yeah, basically all those things which are considered okay when women are doing it, it's not okay when men are doing it and vice versa. Most emotions are kind of frowned upon with men, but especially all the emotions that we consider as weak or that we consider as feminine. So vulnerability, fear. Well, I would say, see, Bollywood screwed up a lot of things for me. I never saw a man, a weak man on screen. So while I was growing up, I watched a lot of Bollywood movies. So I always thought, oh, men are supposed to be like strong. But now, these are the things I hated that we have stressed so much upon men around the world that they have to be this macho and all the time. So that that's something, no, I don't like. I'm here, Schrupp, she's a German feminist and I, I really love her work. And she said, we absolutely overestimate our ability to treat people equally. And, and that is really the case. And they did quite a lot of studies on that. So um, they showed parents a picture of a baby, but not, not of their own baby, of a baby. It was the same baby both times. Once the background was pink and once it was blue. And then they asked them, what does the baby feel? It was a crying baby. And they said when the background was pink they said oh she's frightened and then the background was blue they said oh he's angry and you will treat a baby differently when you think it's frightened or it's angry. I always think it's so interesting when you go into um, a toy store for kids and you look at what the toys for boys suggest for a boy to be typical boy activity and what it suggests for, for girls to be typical girl activity. You often see that with the boys, the books or these kind of things it's a lot about being policemen or firemen. With women it's often or girls it's often being a princess and I think that's one of those things right it starts right there girls are supposed to be just pretty and just have a good time and hang out and not really do much activity or something but just look good and uh, boys are going to be the, the people who are active who you know fight fires or crime sometimes actually looking at the way children are already being taught these things is really interesting growing up in the US I can really remember seeing and hearing boys being told from a very young age not to cry. Like as early as maybe two or three years old, if boys would fall down or they would be upset about something or disappointed, I can remember hearing them being told, don't cry, big boys don't cry, come on, man up. And they were shamed, it seemed like, for crying. Mm -hmm. Whereas for me, growing up in the US as a girl, I feel like I was taught that it's okay if I cry. 
And it was okay if I cried around my friends. Still to this day, I feel okay crying around my friends. And even like, I was told that's good. Sometimes it's good to cry it out. You know, if I wasn't feeling good or I was upset about something, if a little boy trips and falls and starts to cry, even if these exact phrases aren't used, it mm -hmm. might just be like, oh, come on, come on, no, 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 you don't, don't cry, don't cry. Mm -hmm. You know, just automatically that could happen I think without people, even trying. Most people don't do this by purpose. Right. Anymore. They just repeat phrases that have always been there. Yeah. And then when a girl, a little girl falls, just instinctively in the US, maybe without even thinking about it, it just, you're just so, it's so ingrained in you mm -hmm. um, that many people, would just, oh, are you okay? You know, how did that feel? It really takes actively thinking about it not to do it. Like the, yeah. the best meaning people in the world, if they grow up in that society, might do that on accident without even realizing it. If a little boy falls, just like, no, no, you're okay, you're okay. And if a girl falls, like yeah. letting her cry. What's your experience been with this in Germany? I think it's, it's, it's essentially the same thing. I mean, we have the same phenomenon that you have a kind of shame about crying in public. I would say it's also a little bit for girls, but generally less. I don't know if I would say that you're encouraged to cry things out because this is something I I haven't much experienced, but maybe it's just me. But it's definitely, yeah, if someone cries, it's, it's okay for a girl and not okay for a boy. There is a feeling or an emotion that I feel like men are allowed to show and women are not, and that is anger. anger. Yes, <laughs> anger. And I've, I've done it a few times in this video where I've been like, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry that I'm getting so like worked up about it. And yeah, I have experienced that so many times in my life where I am angry about something and so that turns into a passion. Yeah. And Throughout history, when women have gotten angry and passionate about something, they have been called hysterical, emotional, crazy, asked if they're on their period, are you PMSing, you know? And this has got to stop. I am so sick of being told to calm down. It's the same in Germany. It's more subconscious, I think, than very conscious but if you think of like politics it's like a very interesting field to look at and i think it's it's very similar in in germany and the us in that way germany has now a female leader since many years which is like considered a con success story because she is a woman <laughs> and she is like serving for a very long time but then it's also interesting what kind of character Angela Merkel is. She's someone who's like very calm. For a long time, she has been really like people didn't like her for the fact that she's not passionate enough. Nowadays, she has more respect. She has respect because she was able like to navigate Germany through a lot of like intense times and also troublesome times with being calm, you know? Have you ever heard someone tell a boy or a man, don't be such a girl, or don't do that thing like a girl? Maybe in German that would be like, sei nicht so ein Mädchen? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all the time. I mean, it starts on the schoolyard, right? In, in high school or maybe even elementary school. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> Many a times, right? It suggests that being a woman or being a girl equals being weaker or being less courageous, and that is a big problem. I mean, uh, I was, one of the boys, so I also heard it the other way around. If you say in German uh, the expression uh, seinen Mann stehen, uh, as a woman, for example, um, then you are like really tough and uh, you're the, the boss um, in front of others or whatever. So that is something positive. Have you ever had anyone tell you or have you experienced it with your daughter? Don't be such a boy. No, I haven't actually. Um, when you did something that was boyish, they thought, oh, this is good. She's behaving like a boy. Well done, because this is what you should aspire to. So I did learn that girls' things were less valuable and, and boys' things were the good things and you should be tough like a boy. I can remember my mom telling me, you are not a boy. <laughs> when I was um, playing a lot in 
the dirt outside. When I tell people that I play roller derby and uh, maybe they watch a YouTube video or something, I have heard things like, oh, isn't this too dangerous? And uh, aren't you scared or aren't you afraid to get hurt? Just like any full other full contact sport, you wouldn't say to a rugby player, oh, aren't you afraid you're gonna get hurt? Aren't you afraid you're gonna get a, get a scar or something? And people don't say it to men you know, uh, to male athletes, you know, only to female athletes. And she dressed me in really pretty dresses because it was Sunday and we wanted to go to visit my grandma or something like that. And I got everything messy. And then she told me, no, <laughs> you are not the boy. You don't do that. You are supposed to be nice and yeah, quiet. Sit over there reading books and not running around on the playground. Like there's a lot gender specific speech like this, like wie echte Männer or something like that. And it's it's very interesting because you see that this, I think it's changing in the different generations. I mean, Janusz will help me, hate me for telling this, but one time he told uh, Manuel, his son, he said like, wir regeln das wie echte Männer, like we solve this like real man. Manuel was correcting him and said like, dad, that's that's not something we say nowadays. <laughs> and he was like, Janusz felt offended because, you know, he just used something which was like normal speech for him. And he felt like, why do, you know, why am I corrected for saying something that I'm, I mean, it's not like him who made up the sentence. It's just like he repeated what he has always heard, you know? In school, starting around, I think age like seven or eight, I can remember playing sports in the US where I grew up and hearing, don't do that like a girl. If a boy did something like kicked the ball not very well or was running too slowly, yeah. then his peers or yeah, just other people might say like, ah, he runs like a girl. Or the coach might say, don't play like a girl. Also that girly things, um, boys would get made fun of if they played with them. So mm -hmm. like dolls or the color pink. For me growing up in that society, I really internalized all of this. Mm -hmm. And then I went through a tomboy stage and that's like I started dressing all in boys clothes and wore like a baseball cap on backwards and I really wanted to act like a boy and be tough like, like a boy. Consciously because you heard that in school? I don't think I don't think I put two mm -hmm. and two together and like made this decision, mm -hmm. but I can remember wanting to be taken seriously and wanting to be tough. I liked to ride my bike and rollerblade. <laughs> I wanted to be taken seriously yeah. and i felt like the only way i could do that would be to really dismiss all of my girly things even if i had liked some of the girly stuff i think this devaluing of girly things because if a boy wanted to play with a doll the reaction was often like to make fun of him. Oh, mm. why would you want to play with that girl thing as though it were less than? Yeah, I think this devaluing of girl things devalues girls. It's it's definitely the same in Germany and I've grown up kind of with the same wording even. But it's interesting because I'm I'm not always sure if it's only devaluing. It's more like you have strict gender roles on both sides because I actually had the opposite experience when I was young. I more identified with boys and boys things. I've always more wanted to be a boy or actually it was not really conscious, you know, I just liked everything that boys liked. I liked to play with boys. I liked to, to play with sword, do more like physical activities, do sports. I played uh, soccer, which in Germany is like a boy sport other than in the US. Soccer in the US yeah, is a girl sport and and people don't respect it, right? Exactly. In the and in Germany people wouldn't respect women's soccer even though like the uh, German women soccer team is pretty successful. I mean this is a sports thing in general that most sports are dominated by men and people like look up to the men as like the top athletes and then women are just always below that. The fact that soccer is big here and you know not in the US because it's a a girl sport in the US made me think about the fact that and please let me know your experience and thoughts with this down in the comments but I feel like as an American I can remember hearing in the US people referring to 
European men in general as like girly because they like <laughs> soccer and they're a little bit more yeah. maybe open with their emotions, maybe mm -hmm. a little bit, maybe. So like that they're girly or less manly than manly American men yeah. that, that, you know, play American football and don't show their emotions and don't cross their legs. You know, European men sometimes cross their legs like, um, in a girly way. But and it's almost like a compliment to, I mean, in that sense of there's maybe less clear roles in, in Europe, which is like a positive. I behaved like a boy when I was young. I felt like this was the biggest trouble I had because like people, like my parents, for example, told me like, yeah, you should be more girl. Like you should, you know, behave like a girl. I almost felt like people would like me more if I was more like a girl. And that is like hurtful to tell a kid, you know, I don't think my parents did this consciously or anyone else did this consciously, but it's just stupid and hurtful. The most dangerous thing is to put these roles as like, there are like two ideal roles because there are so many people who are in between. I think there's probably more people who do not fit the classical roles than people who fit the classical roles. And we somehow, I don't even know why we do this, that we like keep up these like roles. So, so our, our question, question for, for you is, is, if you are from the US or Germany, do you also, have you experienced it the way Kadi and I described it? What are your thoughts on it? And if you're from any other country around the world, what have your experiences been like there? How does it work there? So basically, wherever you're from, what are your thoughts and what have your experiences with this been like? please let us know in the comments below. A big thank you, thank you, thank you to Kati for joining me in this video. Thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on this topic. It was a pleasure. Thanks uh, for having me. Yeah, you're <laughs> welcome. It was really wonderful talking to you. The more that I talk to different people, just the more I wanna talk about more topics and more mm -hmm. things and talk to more people. Until next time, Auf Wiedersehen. Auf Wiedersehen.